Uh, Sam married Hilda for 55 years. He's the father of three sons, Matt, Tim, and David. He graduated from Purdue University in 1957 with a degree in mechanical engineering. Served three years in the U.S. Army Security Agency. Worked for Powers Regulator Company for six years designing and engineering pneumatic control systems. <clears throat> he joined Kimmel, Randolph, and Jensen on May 1st of 1967 and retired from KJWW on December 31st, 1995. Since retiring, Hildy and he <clears throat> have traveled to over 80 different countries and 35 island groups. You said uh, the man who changed the world. Well, this is a story of two men. And uh, I've already been told today that uh, you know, some of you knew Walt uh, Kimmel and some of you knew Ward Jensen. These were two fantastic individuals. And I don't mean the, they were just good people. Now, I kind of have a, a little thing here. Walt, he had great parents. I knew them both. They were hardworking, they were Christian, honest, cared about raising a family. Now what, I mean, that's, that's a, a fantastic thing to say about parents, then and today. Ward Jensen had great parents, hardworking, Christian, honest, and cared about raising their family. So here's two individuals that have different backgrounds. And there's a little history there. Ward came to the office when he was about 60 years old, and he'd been up to see his parents. They lived up by uh, Northwest Iowa. And he said, Sam, you won't believe what I found out. And I said, what? He said, well, my grandparents died when my dad was real young. So he was adopted by a local family. I just found out that he had a sister that only lived 10 miles from where I grew up. And he said, I didn't know it until I was 62 years old. Very unusual. Okay, now on, Ward's, or on Walt's side, Walt had a, his father was the educator and a track coach at Rock Island High School for years. But when he first came out of college, he took a job at, uh, out in Colorado and uh, in one of the mining camps. And of course they found out he knew football and they wanted a football team, uh, miners like action. So he, they raised some money, bought uniforms and he trained a football team. Now they needed an op opponent. So they finally found another school that would come up to uh, play, and uh, that was good. And they got ready to start the game, and they realized they didn't have referees. So the two coaches got together and said, I'll tell you what, you coach, you referee one half, and I'll run the other half, or whatever. So they flipped, and that's what they did. Well, <laughs> in one of the plays, the quarterback went back to pass the ball. It got tipped and it came right to Walt's dad who intercepted the ball and ran it back for a touchdown. That really stirred up Leadville. Of course, it was called back, but it sure did create some excitement. So that's the kind of the background that these two men came from. Walt, uh, by the way, uh, he has got a connection. He graduated from Purdue University and uh, in, in mechanical engineering. Uh, <coughs> While he was on campus, uh, he was offered $10 if he would swim nude across the Wabash River. <laughs> and so, hey, that's like a 20 to 1 today, so it'd be about like $200 today, and that's still no small thing. So he agreed. And, of course, when he came out of the water, here was a big, big crowd of kids. <laughs> they had been publicizing it all over campus all afternoon. But Walt was one step ahead of him. He had a friend who came down with a big towel and waded out in the water and wrapped him up. So it was a, a kind of a draw on that one. Walt then finally, after uh, Dow Chemical for a while, and he finally joined, uh, joined John Deere 
in designing buildings and facilities. Uh, interesting, his boss at John Deere was Ward Jensen, who was in charge of utilities. Walt had three children. The oldest was J uh, Ann, then there was Jim and Greer. And uh, of course, uh, to get a little extra money, he started moonlighting, uh, doing small jobs for a couple local architects. He designed an awful lot of Eagle stores and little school additions around this area of the country. Now, that's the mechanical side, but you see, you need somebody to do the wiring and the electrical engineering. He turned to Ward. So now, Ward is working for Walt in the evening and out of the way during the day. Well, as you have these jobs out there and they're being constructed, and there's a question, you go call the guy who drew it. And so Walt was getting an awful lot of phone calls out at Deer about Eagle stores and uh, little school editions. And finally, they said, hey, whoa, whoa, we've got to put a stop to this. So they went to Ward and said, Ward, we understand that Walt Kimmel is doing a lot of moonlighting. Now you tell him, you call him man and give him his choice. Either he gives up moonlighting or he gives up deer. So that was the plan. And Walt went home and talked it over with Carol. And they decided that they could make it as consulting engineering. So Walt quit Deer and Company and opened a little uh, Walt Kimmel engineering firm. Uh, he was soon joined by a guy by the name of George Randolph, also a mechanical. And uh, in the meantime, Ward was still doing their, their electrical engineering at night. <laughs> so it's kind of a mix up here, but that's the way it worked out. When Ward got 20 years in with Deere and Company so he could retire, then he left Deere and Company and it became uh, Kimmel, Randolph, and Jensen. And it was that way for quite a while. And uh, one morning, well, uh, George Randolph came in. He was a little under the weather. In fact, he was drunk. <laughs> By noon, it was Kimmel Jensen and Associates. <laughs> I was there at the time, and I wondered what happened. Uh, the, the company was successful and did a lot of things right. Uh, one of the things, of course, when, you, when you're dealing with two guys like Walt Kemmel and Ward Jensen, uh, it was fun to engineer. And I was working on temperature controls uh, in Indiana and in South Bend, and I wasn't getting, I just kind of, there's more to life than this. So I thought, well, I'll go down to Purdue, uh, West Lafayette, and see if there's anything open. So I went down and I filled out some paperwork and went back home. When I got home, Hildy said, hey, there's a guy by the name of Walt Kimmel called and said, regardless of when you come in, give him a call. Uh, they can wait till the morning. So I called him the next day. They said, hey, you got to come out and see us. We got a little firm out here. We need some help. So when it comes to air conditioning, I had been designing all of the controls to make them work. So I knew how all the systems worked. You name it, I could do it. I didn't know how to size one, though. I didn't know if it had to be 20 tons or 200 tons. And they said, well, we can teach you that. It's how they work that we don't understand. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I uh, went to work with Walt, and they were very good. And uh, we, we did quite well. And uh, some of the things that, you know, I'm coming into the field from a control standpoint, and I'm saying, why do we have to do this, or why do we have to do that? Well, one of the pleasures was going to Ward Jensen, who, by the way, he became a, a professional electrical engineer and a professional mechanical engineer, both. And uh, he, liked to, he liked to play games. And so I would go in and sit down and say, Ward, I want to try something on you. Oh, boy. And he would clear his desk, and it was his job to find out what I did wrong, or what I was doing was not wouldn't work. And if he couldn't prove me wrong, then we would go ahead and do it. <laughs> and this went on all the time we was there. In fact, Ward was probably the best all-around engineer I ever worked with, or ever knew, for that matter. Some had greater degrees, some had all this, but as far as just a tremendous engineer, 
He, he had it. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, this worked out. But anyway, uh, I got to go back now. We decided, Hilly and I, that we would go to work for Kimmel Jensen. And uh, so we were to come out, and he wanted to be sure that I brought my family. He, I don't know if he hired me or them. But uh, it was kind of night. We came in on a Friday afternoon. Uh, in fact, it was dark, I guess about 7. And uh, we go to the, uh, the address, Walt's home, there on 25th Street. And uh, I knock on the door, and a lady answered. And I said, uh, you must be Mrs. Kimmel. She said, no, I'm Mrs. Jensen. <laughs> and I thought, oh, wait, I've got something is wrong. And so uh, and I said, uh, uh, Walt and Ward are out of Black Hawk College attending a meeting uh, that had the engineering for the Black Hawk College. And uh, Carol Kimmel was the international president for the PTA, and she was coming in and wouldn't be in for another couple hours from the airport. And so we were to uh, feed the children because they should be hungry and put them to bed, which we did. And uh, by that time, Ward and Walt came in, and then later Carol, and we visited till about, oh, 11 or 12 o'clock, went to bed. Well, the next morning, uh, Walt is up early, and he's in shaving, and uh, in little, three little heads stuck in the door. <laughs> and that was Matt, Tim, and David. And he said, what's the matter, boys? You gotta go to the toilet. He said, yes. And so, David uh, just stood there, and he said, uh, go ahead, David, and, and Matt said, well, he needs a little help. <laughs> and so, Walt says, okay, fine, I had boys. So he drops his uh, shorts down, and, and he pushes it down, and Matt looked over and said, a little bit lower, and about that time, he hit the wall right above the toilet. <laughs> So that was Walt's introduction to my three sons. <laughs> and of course he laughed and he loved to tell that story. <laughs> we, uh, Ward Jensen, uh, had a friend down in Macomb that was sick and was in the hospital and, uh, so he thought he would go down and visit him. So he went down and uh, to see his friend. And while he was in the hospital, he went down to the to the boiler room and saw the plant and building engineer. And he gave me his card and said, if you need any engineering, give us a call. Well, a few weeks later, we get a call and I go down and we solve a problem. And then another problem came up. We went and solved that one. And if it's electrical, whatever, Somebody in our firm could solve their problem. And that started us in the healthcare field. And uh, in doing hospital work, we found out basically what you're doing is uh, trying to keep everybody healthy. And the, the thought at that time was the more air you move through, I guess you're gonna wash the germs out of the air by just moving them real fast. <laughs> and uh, these, were, these were what they call constant volume. In other words, so much air came in and you had to throw it away. <coughs> Once through. And you would take the air on a 95 degree day, cool it down, get it just perfect, and if there's nobody in the room, you just throw it away. Why not just pinch it down? And if you needed uh, so much air, a thousand CFM at one time, and there's nobody in the room, let's go back to 50 and maintain the temperature. That's called variable volume. Was not allowed. But we had two hospitals <clears throat> that didn't have the capacity to do a good job. And they had to have like six little operating rooms. Well, we figured out that, hey, if we didn't have to supply all six of them at the same time, we could do a lot better job with those that, that are, were being used. And so we had two hospitals, one in Macomb and one in Sterling, that we did that way. And uh, so then I got to reading the Illinois Hospital Code, found out it was illegal. <laughs> <laughs> so I got on the phone and I called Jim Linder, who was the 
state architect for the Department of Health. 